Uh, the mesh network allows you to connect each of the laptops together without having to have a server in between. And this sort of frees them up to, to uh, talk to each other without having to have complex uh, uh, hardware or expensive hardware. Okay, it's a wireless network but it's different from your normal wireless network in the sense that every node, that is every computer, can also route the traffic from other computers to get to an access point or a mesh portal in this case. Uh, my name is Miguel Angel Alvarez and I'm an engineering intern here at the Royal PC. So normally you will have one access point in the middle and uh, everyone would connect directly to the access point. And when you have a mesh network, you can have another one further off who connects to the internet or to the access point or to the server through the intermediate node. And, you know, I mean, this might be, in the case of wireless networking, this might be 300 feet. Most laptops don't have the ability to dynamically mesh. And so what happens is that if you're over here, you can't actually access anything. You know, you can't get anywhere from right. it. Um, but with the mesh networking, um, that actually dynamically extends the range. And so as long as somebody is between you and the access point of the mesh, um, you know, which happens to be school most of the time, then you'll have an internet connection because it can hop from computer to computer, laptop to laptop to get to the school. The hardware is integrated into the mainboard. There is a chip which takes care of uh, all network related stuff. And the antenna, they only serve as physical gain elements so that you get a little bit uh, a better signal to noise radio. The good thing is normally antennas are built behind the screen and they have some interference because there is a lot of electric activity going around. And in this case, we have separated a little bit the antennas from the rest of the computer so that they are better isolated and they have, a better, and they have less noise from other electric components. And that's beneficial for the whole connection. You know, each laptop has a range, and so you can think of it like clouds. If each laptop has a small cloud around it, when the clouds intersect, they're meshed. And you can actually, you know, that makes the entire mesh bigger as you keep adding more laptops. When you introduce the internet into that system, it just opens you up to a wider network. So you have your mesh network, which is a smaller network uh, where kids are sharing the stuff that they create. And then once they're on the net, uh, on the internet, they can th then go and hook up with other um, people the way that we normally interact with, with the internet. But um, they don't always have to be connected to the internet to actually have a useful uh, networked experience. Whether or not there is uh, an internet portal of any kind, the computers can talk to each other and can collaborate and can uh, execute applications together. I mean, you can imagine with games that there's a really good possibility to use this because right now, um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of network games, but they depend on a server. And potentially, you know, what you can do is you can just start up a random game and somebody else can join. You can invite them to that game and they can play. It's really independent um, of, you know, any of the infrastructure that you might need. Two kids with a laptop sitting under a tree could play Connect 4. It's a little bit harder in today's computer and most people don't even think about these sorts of things when they're making games today. Normally, what happens is that in the, there is a mesh view in the interface that shows who others are present in the mesh network at any given moment. And then in that way you can either talk to them directly or initiate an activity or share an activity with them. And in that way you can, for example, browse the internet together and you can both see the same pages and comment what you're seeing or you can draw a picture together. So um, I downloaded uh, the ebook Little Women on this machine and I shared the activity by clicking on the share. Uh, button in the toolbar and over on this laptop it popped up in the mesh view um, so I clicked on it in the mesh view um, and that starts up the same instance a shared instance of the read activity um, which automatically downloads the ebook from this computer to that computer and so both these uh, laptops right now are you know reading the ebook little women um, you know you could highlight things and that would show up in the other person's document like hey take a look at this um, we also want to do annotations um, as well just kind of like leave a little post-it in the document for the other person as well you have to make a mesh which is both more robust and uh, easier to configure to access and to get away from because the users are going to be children in the end and they have to have access with, uh, to this automatically without having to configure you know without having to figure out how to connect with one or how to connect with the other only seeing other users and being able to interact with them. And that's one of the things we want. We don't want them just using the computer so that they can use technology. We want them to use this computer so that they can 
become social with each other and collaborate with each other. 